Mm -hmm. Right. Hey, we're going to jump right in. It's five o'clock. Hey, everybody. We are we are watch me work and we are back. We've been away doing some internal amazing uh, restructuring and reorganizing so we can be even better organized and more available uh, to y'all. Um, we just want to before we get started, I'm SLP and I want to give thanks to HowlRound and the Public Theater. And we are now under the care and guidance of the new work development department at the Public Theater. It's run by Amritha and it's assisted by Zoe. So you want to say hi uh, before hi. we get started? <laughs> hi, nice to meet everyone. Um, thank you for your patience and grace today as I as I um, uh, take take this over. So <laughs> thank you. Very excited. We're where we should be, Zoe, and we're so glad that you're you're helping us now. Um, we're in the new work development department. So I know it looks the same, <laughs> but uh, it's a different department. So. Uh, Okay, and and Amritha will will who's the head of the new work development department will join us and maybe say hi. But um, we're not waiting for anybody because we have work to do. So we're going to work for twenty minutes, and um, then we're going to I'm going to talk with you about questions that you have about your creative process. You, you, you. It's all about you. That's what Watch Me Work is all about. If you can figure that out, you get a prize. Um, and if you would like to ask me a question about your creative process, uh, and, and don't be shy about when it comes to question asking time, because always the question you've got about your work is something that we've all been thinking about, and it's incredibly helpful to have those conversations. It, it, it's so you think it's all going to be, oh, no, I can't ask a question because it's all about me and I'm shy or whatever, I, you know, but it's not. It's all about it's all about us. So uh, if you have a question, uh, Zoe will tell you how to get in touch. Go Zoe. Um, yeah, uh, please just use your raise the hand function and I will um, ask you to unmute. And is there also, there? we used to have a, like a, anyway, it, that's the best way to do it. We used to have like a Twitter or a something or an Insta, uh, not probably not Insta, anyway. Yeah, we, we, know we, don't, a, we, we don't have that anymore because we no longer have an X account. Okay, well, that's fantastic. We're shedding unnecessary things. Okay, so just raise your hand. And um, if you have a question in the next 20, in 20 minutes after we've all started working together, are we ready? Here we go.
All right. That was 20 minutes. That was 20 minutes of work time. We're back. We're back. I'm Risa, the head of New Work Development. You want to introduce yourself and say hello? You're the new, the new boss ladies in town, baby. <laughs> Thanks, SLP. Hey, everyone. Um, my name is Amrita Ramanan. My pronouns are she, hers. I'm the director of um, New Work Development at the Public. And sorry for being a little bit late. My laptop decided to crash, so I had to get on a new laptop to sign in, but grateful to now be with you all. And Zoe, your assistant, do you want to give, do you want to give your full, you know? Oh, my, full, my full intro? <laughs> sure. Uh, sure. Hi, my name is um, Zoe Kim, pronouns are she, her, and I am the New Work Development Manager at The Public, and very happy to be here to support this process. <laughs> so we're very lucky to be in the New Work Development Department. Yay! It's where we belong. Uh, and uh, to that, uh, we got a lot of new work happening right here at Watch Me Work, which is the joy of uh, every time we get together, we get to talk about your work and your creative process. Anybody have any questions? It's good to see some of your faces. I haven't seen some in a long time. Yes, Larry, I see your hand. Hey, Larry. Hi, how are you? Hi, great to see you, Larry. Good to see you, SLP. Good to be here. I'm glad you started back up. Um, so I, literally this morning, I saw that there's an announcement for a play on Broadway that's like about the thing that's my favorite scene in my play. Oh. And I feel a little scooped. And I'm feeling a little like I, I'm too late, and I'm feeling um, like now I got to change everything, and like uh, yeah, it just it just uh, messed with my head a little bit, and I wonder if you've ever felt scooped. <laughs> wow, wow. Um, you yeah, well, the thing is, it's like all the time we all we all walk around and go, oh, I'd love to write about such and such, and then you. You turn around and see that somebody thought about doing the same thing like three years ago and they got around to doing it. Um, that's a really tr that's a really hard feeling to handle, you know, like, darn, I had a really good idea. And I guess it wasn't only mine to to shepherd, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm like feeling like darn with you. I'm feeling like darn, darn, yeah. darn, darn. Um, I mean, here's the thing. Um, is there any way that you you could write it anyway? There's that, you know. Absolutely, and I'll say it, it, it's it's just um, uh, it's it's a it's a scene that I wrote that whenever I get lost in the piece, I go back to the scene because like, the scene represents what I want the play to be, mm -hmm. and. So it's sort of been a touchstone for me. Mm -hmm. And then that scene is now like a play. But actually, my whole play is not right. that scene. Right, right. That's a really good point. That's a really good point. Your whole, I mean, it's like, it's like if we had maybe say, um, uh, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to get, is it, is it an historical moment? No. No, okay, but it's a similar like same like someone goes into a shop and and buys a a a a, a pot of flowers and does a dance. Is it kind of like that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll tell you exactly what it is. It's okay. this is a play on Broadway with Danny DeVito and his daughter, and it's the d daughter is uh, dealing with his dad being a hoarder, and my little scene is about a daughter with his dad who's a hoarder. <laughs> Oh, I, you know what? I, I think that's okay. Because, because for you, it's a touchstone for them. It's their whole, like, be all end all, you know? And I, I think, I think that, yeah, I mean, they're, they're, that's really intense though. I got to say, that's really intense. And it's like, darn, darn. People will think I copied, you know, right. well, we, we know, we know you didn't, we know you didn't. <laughs> so that's for sure. Um, yeah. 
but you think yours is only going to be a, a blip. If we can think of right now, all the plays that have like similar, you know, uh, mother daughters who hate each other, um, you know, kids who want to be stars and end up with broken dreams. You know, there are there are themes, you know, and I think maybe by the time uh, your play comes around, I'll we'll be like, oh, yeah, maybe we'll need more of it. More hoarders. <laughs> I, don't know. I don't know. It sucks. You can. I, I appreciate the empathy. I, know. I know. I I feel for you, though, bro. Has anybody else had something like that happen to them? I see some nods. Yeah. 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 It sucks. It sucks. <laughs> yeah. But I guess that's why I got to write the whole play mm -hmm. so that this one scene is not. Right. 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 Take me down. Right. No, it won't, it won't take you down. Um, but yes, you do. Well, yeah, you do have to write your whole play. I mean, is is it giving you a little fuel for that? Uh, well, it, it is in combination with us being back here. So, yes. <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. Likewise. Yeah. Likewise. Thank you. Well, we're here for you. We'll cheer you Thank on. Thank you. I'm going to cheer you on. Sure, man. Yes, Kimmy, I see your hand. Hey, Kimmy, how you doing? Oh, I don't take that question anymore. <laughs> I'll tell you my weight before I tell you how I'm doing. <laughs> so, wow, that's sister. That's really funny. <laughs> Thanks. It's like you're doing stand up over here. <laughs> um, it's been a tough year, and the last month we had a move, so it's oh, oh, yeah, it's it's been too much. But um, to Larry's point. I was in Edinburgh and my play is about a woman who um, didn't commit suicide because the, the note was she found the suicide note too arduous because she's a writer and, you know, writing is rewriting. <laughs> she's like, ah, screw it. So she's been alive because she didn't get around to doing the note. And then she decided to um, workshop it at her writer's group. And when I was in Edinburgh, there was a woman who was workshopping her suicide note. And I thought, oh, crap, it's the same thing. And I went to see it. And it is the same premise in that it's a woman with a suicide note, but it's not at all the same. And, and I know that gutted feeling, um, Larry and, and, and uh, SLP, like, it's the same, you know, so it's not just empathy, but look at how many variations of a theme there are, right? The duck variations, there's, you know, how many things of Hamlet, how many, so I think we just keep on writing. We just keep writing our plays. And, and the question that I had was, um, I find the, I'm kind of stuck with wanting to use um, music uh, and how would I go about like trying to obtain royalties or do I just write the play and then uh, worry about that later? Great question, Kimmy. So um, I'm. So it sounds like you're wanting to use music written and perhaps performed by others. Yes a Joni Mitchell song, the okay. later version of Both Sides Now. Great. Okay. Fantastic. Write your play. <laughs> <laughs> yes. When it comes to that part, you can just, you know, please, please don't be getting involved in getting rights to, you know, somebody's music. And imagine, imagine here you are, you know, you're here, you are writing away and you're writing, you know, and then you go, Okay, now I have to get the rights to Joni Mitchell's. The, the <laughs> Look how far your pencils are. Away your pen. ah, and now you're writing emails, complicated emails, maybe because Joni Mitchell has lawyers, or at least their lawyers have lawyers, or whatever, you know, right? And look how far you are. With, you see what I mean? Okay. Yes, yes. You know how the song goes. It's one song. Either you're going to get it or you're not. And in the meantime, you can whistle it. 
<laughs> when you want to hear it, like you come to that moment. Yeah. Whistle the song. There you okay. go. I mean, not in a production, of course, by the time you get to a production, of right. course. I mean, before you get to a production, after you finish the play, after you finish a play, the end and maybe a rewrite or two. So it's it's I, I'm writing it for my um, application for NYU. And I was <laughs> wondering, would would that be a turnoff if I put that in there or would, or, or it doesn't really matter? Um, I would, number one, I'm not in the admissions department at NYU. So I so my answer is just going to be my opinion. Yeah, I like your opinion. Um, just so my opinion, no, no, no. If someone doesn't, you know, you can even say, well, I don't have the rights to this song yet. If you want to hear it, here's a link. You okay. Know? I okay. mean, you know, you know, please, please, yeah, it's not about that. Thank you. You're welcome. Love you, miss you guys. So good to be back. <laughs> AV, uh, AV. Oh, yes. AV, did you have your hand? Hey, yeah, I had my hand up. I have a question or actually two. Um, my first question is how much time do you spend in the outline phase for a first draft? And my second question is I'm writing a play about how like voodoo and the spiritual world sort of collide with our reality. And it seemed really great, like in theory, but now as I'm writing, I'm like, okay, this is like feeling a little cheesy in some places. And like, how do I make them intersect in a better way? So, I mean, if it's a first draft, would you just write, write, write and not think about that and sort of like clean it up or make it blend um, better in the second draft? Or yeah, do you have any advice? Yeah, yeah. so it's great, great questions, Avi. So on an outline, um, how much time have you spent already? Um, I think I spent about two weeks. And how far are you? Um, I was using the five act structure. I'm pretty much all the way. Um, like I've done one, two, three, and four. Um, and there's a couple, there's a few gaps. And then I have to figure out the ending. And then I just kind of started writing. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, oh, so you've already finished your outline. Kind of, sort of, but I'm wondering if I need to go back and then if, you know, certain scenes need to be flipped. Um, and then also space between scenes that seem like they're similar in terms of their setup, you know, if I need, um, you know, other types of scenes in between them. So maybe I'm just overthinking it. Well, yes, <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, yes. And um, talk to me about why you chose a five act structure. Um, well, I have tried to write a, um, a screenplay with a three act structure and I found things getting a little bit muddy for me. So I decided to try um, this pathway to see if I got a little more clarity and okay. it seems to be working a little better for me now. What, um, what structure do you use? Well, whatever. I, no, no, no. This is about you. This is about you. <laughs> it's all about you. I know I'm the, I'm the good girlfriend. I make it all about you. Um, <laughs> Uh, no, I, what, whatever works I'm, I'm by any means necessary. I'm just curious to, to, but that's a great idea. Like one way of working on an outline doesn't work for you. You're allowed to try different, uh, different tactics. You know, that's great. That's really smart, Avi. So, okay. So you're, you're done with your outline. So you spend two weeks working on your outline. If you got done with your outline, then I'd say, good job. Two weeks is long enough. You know, you just want to write it then be done. Um, there's no set time limit. I think two weeks is great. Three weeks, you know, it might all come to you in a rush. And so you, you get it all out there in one afternoon and then you don't have to spend the two weeks just right. But I like outlines because then uh, they're like, you know, maps or the GPS or whatever, you know, you have an idea of where you're going. And this answers your second question. You don't, you know, you don't want to overthink it too tough. You don't have to know everything. If you knew everything, what would you do during the rewrite? You'd be sad and bored and lonely, you know? Um, so if you give yourself something to do, like maybe I flip some scenes, maybe write some more scenes in between those two things like that. that give, that's your rewrite, All right? So get it down and then make it better. Get it down, writing, make it better rewriting, right? Does that make sense? You're muted. Oh, did you mute yourself? Okay. Mm. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you so much. I'm going to um, put Great. that in practice. Thank you. 
Great questions. Thank you. Yes, Ace, I see your hand. Hey. Hey, Ace. Good to see you. Hi, good to see you too, Sophie. Um, so my dilemma is that yeah. like I've been like away from like the computer like for like a month and I and I just came back um from my computer and then like I got an email. I was like, yo, there's this new play opportunity, you should do it. Um, and then so like I took I like my first play I wrote, it took me three years to write it, and it was like five days until this next opportunity. I was like, I'm gonna write a new a, a new what a new play in five days. Okay, or, like, not a new play, but um one of the plays that I have been working on, huh? like from like this big list of plays that just I have skeletons of and I keep on changing which which one I'm working on. Right. Okay. And then during this like five day like like battle of like which play to choose to pick on to then submit to this opportunity, I just kept on switching and switching and switching to a point where I didn't even focus on one play. I just kept on going to this play and this play and that other play where it ended up where I didn't even get to submit a play. Um, because one of the I one of the things that are that got like really stuck in my head that uh, gives me a lot of anxiety when I write and like when I think about like how like other people will like read and how they perceive my writing is that like sometimes I feel as if like as like a writer of color as an Asian American writer it's like as if um, institutions, theater companies, universities, they won't necessarily like, like I have this in my head, like where like they won't accept my play unless I talk about the Asian American experience, for example. Like I, I feel as if sometimes I'm more of a cultural product for a means to an end, for an institutional's like means to an end, instead of like a person with ideas. And like that was sort of that things were like, when I switched from this play to this play to this play, it's like, this play is more Asian, so I, I should do this play. Like, no, this play is like more fun and like more wacky and like, I want to do this. But then, and, you know, so it was like, that, that was just like some like, I don't know, like worm that was like stuck in my head throughout the whole process. And like, I kind of need help with like, it kind of goes with like the conversation we had way back when, or like, I think about like how other people, like there's someone behind me while I'm writing and I'm writing for that person instead of writing for me. And so mm -hmm. it was like, Hmm. You know, it's great. Ace, where do you live? I live in Florida. Where in Florida? I live in Central Florida, Sefner, Florida. Say it um, again. Sefner, Florida. Uh, it's like no, 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 no. I, I mean, it's weird. So, if you were living closer, and if it were agreed upon as appropriate, I want to give you a hug because you are really dealing with some stuff, Ace. Thank you. You know, you're really dealing with some stuff. And and like I said before, you know, it's not just I mean, what's beautiful about it. And while I appreciate you talking about these things is that you're not alone. Lots of us on this call, lots of us in the arts, we are going through the same thing, you know, specific to our own product, <laughs> product button that we help uh, organizations and institutions push when they bring us in. You know what I'm saying? So that is a real thing. And that is a thing that has often in my long career made me sad and sometimes angry. Okay. So I want you to know you're not alone. We're, we're with you on that totally. Um, and I'm giving you a hug you. all the way down to Florida. Um, Okay, so now that you know you're not alone, if you can, you're in your mind's eye, look around you and you see people on the screen, right? Yeah. But around you in your, you're in your like your room, where are you bro, where are you Ace right now? Um, it's like, I don't know, just, it's, it's a room, except Okay, room. okay, you're in a room, okay? Look around you, all around you are your allies like your people they might be from your heritage specifically right like yeah. we're specifically like are your is your family from you know I'm from the filipino diaspora okay you so you're for the filipino diaspora all your people are all around you and there are a lot of people there you might oh oh okay you know not looking like me you know but they're my people so they don't have to be like 
racially or ethnically matchy matchy, okay, but they vibe with you. Yeah. They're all there. They are visiting you. They want you to put them in a show. That might be a play. It might be a piece of music. It might be a TV show or a movie or a Insta post, whatever. They are there for you, right? And everybody has this. You look around. If you look closely, people, and take your face out of your phone, right? You're going to hear and feel your people around you. And that doesn't mean like they're my people and they're not your people. I'm not mean that. There are a lot of people who are showing up for you every day. Like, I don't mean, you know, your boss or whatever. I mean, your, your ancestors, if you will, your group, your tribe, they are counting on you and they love you in the way that makes you go, oh, I'm shy. They so love you. That person behind you, who you say you write for, you said there was someone standing behind you. They love you. Let them hug you. You know, do you do you live near your grandparents or any old people that you like? <laughs> no. No. Okay. Well, next time you just see someone who's like, you know, you know, maybe 70 in Florida, there might be, you know, right? Just imagine that hug that an older person is going to give you, right? They're kind of frail and they're so glad to see you and they're so proud of you. Right. The problem with this this thing you're talking about, Ace, about an institution bringing us on so we can be their fucking postage stamp. I mean, don't get me started. I'm not going to get on my soapbox. The problem is, though, is it separates us, us, the person, whoever we are. Everybody's got this issue. It separates the person from all that love that is there for us that got us into this field anyway. Right. In the first place, what got us here? I want to be a writer. Love got you here. That's why you're here. That's why you're here. Because you have so much love and you want to share. And the institution that us just wants us to be a postage, a poster child or whatever you call it, is cutting us off from that love. And they do so willingly and knowledgeably, kind of like they don't know, but they know kind of thing. And one of those things, like they, they know what they're doing, but they don't know what they're doing. They do that because that's where our power is. And they often want this without the power. I'll do it my bicep. You know what I'm saying? Without the power. They don't want the power. They just want you like this. And then they can control you. How great your comment question is. So, so know that those and know that writing about our issues or whatever you know what you write about them in a way that is so far beyond what they think they that you gonna do right i mean top dog fucking underdog right that's what i'm talking about like yeah that's my shit but it's your shit too and that's the power that your people your people have to give you they've got all these gifts and you're one of the people, all y'all, in wherever group you're from or whatever, wherever you live, you're one of those people that's supposed that's that they called on to carry some shit and, and show it to the world. So welcome to the club. <laughs> I know you've been on Watch Me Work before, but now you're formally in the embrace of the tribe, brother. Yeah, Ace, okay? Yeah. You're formally in the embrace. And just know that they love you so much. So just when you feel like I can't focus on what I wanted to call on them and keep showing up here, Ace. Okay. Thank you. I'm sorry. I went, I went on and on and on, but there you go. There you go. Thank mm -hmm. you. What a beautiful. What a beautiful thing you wanted to talk about or wanted me to talk about. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Lord have mercy. What time it is. What time is it? It is. 548 and I see I think we have um Milo's hand next and then Lindy so okay I won't be as long this time I'll just say yes no yes answer yes yes <laughs> hey can you unmute
Uh, Mila, Mila, can you unmute? I can't hear you, sweetie. Oh, do I? Okay, let me see. I haven't asked to unmute. I'm trying to see if there's a way that I can. Let's see. Let's see. Zoe knows. Zoe, are you still there? Or are you frozen? Zoe froze and her computer crashed. So clearly our department is going through wow. today. I'm wow. sorry. Wow. It's okay. Um, I can't you. Hmm. Could you maybe, Mila, Mila, could you put it in the chat? We can read it. Ooh. Is that possible? Can you can you put your oh okay Lindy Linda or Lindy you're unmuted yeah let me try Hi. again Mila. let me see if I can I might just have to ask you to unmute again and maybe that'll work so let me let's try do, it one more time let, let's do Lindy right now so we can just have yes. your we, we, out, they're out of okay awesome go thank you um um I am um producing my own play. Yay. Uh, yeah, I'm doing a fundraiser through Fractured Atlas, which I highly recommend if someone's going to want to umbrella and do their own 501c3 and produce their own project. But my question is very similar um, to ACEs where, you know, I feel like because my, a lot of my writing is just stream of consciousness, the ideas come from, you know, the leaf that floats by that I catch. And a lot of times um, it's why this play, why, you know, and I'm a white woman um, living in Los Angeles and it's like, why this play? Why now? Why for these people? And I feel trapped because for me, I just feel like I just write plays. Like, I don't know why. I don't know why this idea came to me. I don't know why I'm doing this particular piece or why I want to do this particular piece. Like it sings to me you know, and so I never know, because that question comes up all the time of like, why this play? Why do you want to do it now? What, you know, and I get really trapped in that. I, I, I hear you. I hear you, Lindy. And I, I appreciate you saying like who, how you identify and where you live. Um, everything you're just to be just clear, as I understand it, everything that you're going through may I, in my experience, someone like Ace, there's then all the other stuff on it. If you can imagine that's specific to an experience that most of us in this country don't have. And yet we rely on ACE to bring it to us and, and spoon feed it. So there's an added uh, complexity or burden, if you will, on an experience of someone who, uh, um, who is from the Filipino diaspora. So I, I would expect someone, a black person, I, I definitely feel that that thing you have to be that thing whatever that is but i i see what you mean and i think you can what you can do if you feel like you're going to be asked those questions when you submit your play or what sounds like you're off and running though so congratulations for producing your own Thank work you. brilliantly but i i feel like um you can you know those questions are i think asked of everybody and they're called uh press releases as you know right yeah. And you're going to have to do that pitch, talk, you know, you're going to have to get your talking points together, regardless of, of what you're writing and regardless of who you are and who you're presenting it to. For example, if I wrote uh, a play with, you know, five black characters and I submitted it to a black theater, they would still want me to pitch it. You know what I mean? And the pitch is very important. Um, and yeah. it's a good thing just to wrap your head around, like, well, ask yourself, why this play? Why now? What's Because imagine you're on, um, oh, I don't know, some fabulous talk show and you're talking about your work. And the host, the wonderful host who loves that you're there and they want to talk to you about your fabulous play, they, they'd want to ask you, so tell us what got you started writing this play, you know? And that's mm -hmm. fun. So if you think about it more like a fun interview with um, a talk show host that you love, um, th that's a way to sort of, generate answers to those questions that help yeah, help uh, the marketers help the newspapers and the, or the online publications or whatever uh encourage people to come and see your wonderful play yeah okay i appreciate it oh thank you good question it's, it's such a blessing to be here thank you so much yes. thank you and good luck keep us posted thank you Great. So I've been chatting with um, with Myla and we're still having some trouble with the mute. So Myla said that she would put her her question in the chat. So thank you in advance for that. OK. And did you. Um, is it in? The, I don't see it in the chat. Is it in the chat? Is it in the chat? 
don't see it yet, but we do now have Zoe back. So Zoe, do you want to try the unmute again in case it's just yes. me? We love technology. This is where we say, oh, we love technology. Oh, we love technology. <laughs> I, I got to say that for you to unmute, Myla. Can you do it? You can't? I heard a sound. Um, okay. Did you put your did you put your question in the chat, Myla? Oh my gosh. Okay. Um, anybody else have a question? We can go to somebody else. We don't have to. Yes, Leah. Who? Oh, Thea's helping. Mm hmm Okay, well, um, hello. I was having the same uh, mute issue. Um, hi, so I'm writing kind of something uh, that I've been working on for like four years, mm -hmm. loosely, very loosely working on. Mm -hmm. And I've had like different iterations of it. I'm like, maybe this is an audio drama. Maybe this is a novel. Maybe this is something. At this point, you know, I finally figured it out. And I got accepted to like a screenwriting incubator. And I'm just going to do it and get it done with because I'm really sick and tired of it. But at this point, I've been thinking about it for so long and have all these iterations. Like it was a musical at one point and stuff, you know. So there's like a lot of ideas to draw from. But at this point, it's a matter of like, you know, I need like some sort of sieve to kind of, you know, draw out like what's the most important parts that I want to portray in this particular moment. But I guess. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. No, great, great, great. Um, and I'm going to I'm going to answer, I think, your question, which is how do I decide on my many, many projects? And Mila, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right, question, which is I'm a beginner. Uh, I have so many ideas. How do I start? So it could maybe it's the same answer, which could be. Um, uh, Leah, you have a, you can put the quite you can put all the different ideas in a hat and pick them out if it's like which iteration of this project shall I do? You can do that. Or you can just write down all of the you can spend a day with your project and say, okay, we're gonna get in shape before this incubator or before mm -hmm. I start going to these meetings. Um, spend a day, just spend a day with it. Block off time if you can. Um, you know, uh at home after work or if you have a day that's free and spend a day with it, like if you want to just interview it, like, OK, which are the most important ideas? You got to spend some time on it. Yeah. I mean, you, you, it kind of it, it's not going to find you if you're undecided and moving around like that. Right. Um, but the same thing, Mila, with starting a new a new play, you can put your ideas in a hat and pick them out. Sounds silly. Or you could just spend a day going, OK, which one am I really, really, really interested in? and work on it for a week and see where you go. You know, um, you can you can try that. Sorry, I, uh, um, we can't we can't see you or hear you today. But, um, you know, it's all it's it's it it doesn't have to be the only thing you ever write. That's the other thing, Mila, you know, when you start something, it doesn't have to be the only thing you ever write. It's just the first thing uh, as you call yourself a beginner, right? So. So just try something for a week and see and see how you go. And maybe you say, I'm going to write a play and it's going to be five pages long. I mean, and so write a page a day. And at the end of the week, you'll have like five pages and then you can do a rewrite. And your first play can be a relatively short play. Or it can be a full evening of theater like, oh, what was that fabulous play that Carol Churcher wrote? Far, far away, something like that. Anyway. Away. Far away. Okay, right. It was like four. It was it was short, but wow, that's all you wanted. It was fantastic. It was fantastic. So you know, and I know someone who writes a play a day, and they get away with it. So you can you know, you can do these things. Um, but also, Leah, um, spend a spend a day with your work because you know what you want to work on. Mm -hmm. It just has lots of different forms. Great. Just spend a day and let yourself focus. Okay. Thank you. Myla, can you try unmuting one more time? I gave back the authority for people to be able to unmute themselves. She's, in, she's into the waiting room, it says. Oh, okay, okay. It's very complicated. 
Myla. Oh. I found out how to unmute it. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, it turns out that, that it was actually my fault. Okay. But, um, <laughs> the, news, the, the, the other news is that it's 5.59, so quick, one minute. Okay. So I, I really liked your response to that. And um, I guess I'm just a person who's really intimidated by the action of just, because I have a really great idea. It just, I've never written before and I'm kind of um, just intimidated by it. So just anything that you would say to someone who just never written before like that. Yeah, sure. Make it, make it fun. Get a stack of index cards, four by five index cards. They look like this if you've never seen an index card. Who knows? Da -da 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 -da. Mm -hmm. Okay. Write it out on the index cards. Make it different. Don't, you know, handwrite it on index cards that you carry around on a clip in your pocket. Just mm -hmm. change it up. You know, have you ever gone on a date before? Yes. Not to get too personal, but okay. <laughs> okay, there you go. You, you're brave enough to write something. Mm -hmm. Thank it's you. Just, it's just dating. It's just dating. Yeah. 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 It's six o'clock. It's six, six o'clock. We've got one more hand. So I'm wondering, SLP, if we can take no, this last I, one and no, wrap it up. I, I, I go till six o'clock. I got to go. I, I'm like, we love you. If you can come back next week and we will, we will talk with you then. Um, we love you. We love you. And next week we're going to be, yes, we're going to be at, at five o'clock. I'm going to be rushing from somewhere else, which we all know <laughs> the workshop. Um, okay. So we'll see you next week at five o'clock. We love you. Okay. Mama's got to run. Thank you all. Thank hey, you. Hey, bye-bye. We, we aren't, we don't have it next week. <laughs> okay. Well, well, it's okay. I'm, I'm not too worried. I'm not too worried. I got to go. Bye. Bye. Next session. Next session. All right.